And that's how I roll. If you need the screen tilted back a little bit more, you just bend it back. And yes, I did cut myself doing that. So I like doing fun, cheap projects, or even projects that don't cost me anything. Uh, and hopefully this won't, because I'm going to have all the parts. What I want to do is, I already have a large arcade cabinet I built like 15 years ago. I want to make a little tabletop one. I have had this scrap piece of plywood in my garage for a couple of years now. And uh, back probably about 12 years ago, I bought two of these EPCs. These were one of the original uh, netbooks, as they were called. Tiny little laptops, one gig of RAM. Uh, I think the hard drives went bad in it. But I had two of them. I overpaid for them. They were like 500 bucks back in the day. They quickly dropped to like 200. I was one of the first people to buy them. Uh, but they've just been sitting in my office doing nothing for years. So I decided to make myself a tabletop arcade system with one of them. Because plenty of... I've already tested games. I need to retest this one to make sure that it still runs after I did this to it. Uh, I started looking at videos how to properly take it apart. It was just too hard. I'm just like... <clears throat> The wires are still connected. Basically, because uh, it's going to be an arcade thing, the screen's going to be tilted this way a little bit, and I just needed to keep the keyboard out of the way of the controls. Speaking of the controls, again, I, this project's not going to cost me anything, hopefully, because I already have the computer. I already have this board. I do have a, a, a number of Raspberry Pis I'm not using anymore, uh, but then uh, I would need to... I guess I have some screens, but they're not, not small screens like this because I want this thing to be small. But I do have, remember five years ago or so, maybe three years ago, I made an arcade controller for my daughter. Well, I have an extra joystick and a whole bunch of extra buttons and a controller board already left over from that, both red and blue buttons. So hopefully this won't cost me anything. Uh, I've looked up plans online, and I'm just going gonna, just gonna to eyeball what I need to cut. Um, holding up that laptop. I just need to make it wide enough so the USB ports can still be accessed for the controller and, uh, and the power supply on the other side. Other than that, most of the gaming cabinets I've looked for plans online all have very small bases, but uh, I still need the, the computer here underneath the screen. So mine's going to stand up a little bit and actually look more like a real arcade machine, just smaller. So. That's my goal today. I've been thinking about this for a while. I'm finally just getting up and doing it. And by the way, I'm doing this my way, which is thoughts in my head and I don't actually have plans drawn out. Uh, so far all I've done is held the laptop up to this piece of wood with the screen bent back and I drew a very rough pencil outline. I haven't measured anything. I don't know how wide it's going to be. I'm just going to start cutting and hope for the best. I figured the sides are the two most important parts to get right. Everything else, I can use the rest of this wood, or if that doesn't work, I have a pile of pallets outside that I can run through a planer and make nice and use those for where the joystick goes, or the top of it, or the base of it. So I'm not too worried. As long as I get the sides right, everything else uh, I should be able to just use scrap wood for. I also plan on um, uh, trying to do some ink transfers, which I've done a number of times for wood signs and stuff. Uh, very simple to do uh, once you get the hang of it. And so maybe I'll put like uh, Ryu from uh, Street Fighter on one side and Mario on the other side or something. So yeah, uh, this video is less tutorial. I'm just going to start working and show you uh, where I'm at at different stages. Okay, I've done most of the cuts for the side with the table saw. I have to go in uh, with another saw. Table saw, I can't get this angled one without cutting this and this. Uh, but that's going to be the basic look of it. I might to angle this a little bit. Something like that. Uh, but yeah, this is where the screen's going to go. This is where the controller's going to go. The computer's going to be down in here with the screen up there. And then we're going to have a little front board here with the title of a game or something. So I just need to cut out this piece and then mirror image it. So there we go. You can see it a little bit better now. Also, this is an example of a test I did back when I was learning how to do ink transfers. So this is done with an inkjet printer and some uh, paper, that, the backs of stickers. I'll show you how to do this in a little bit, but you can see how well it comes out. So I'm hoping to do that sort of thing on the side of this cabinet here. So, so I've got both sides cut out now. You can see how the laptop will fit between them like so. And I still, I still need to make sure this laptop works after what I've done to it. But the wires still seem intact, and that's the most important thing. Also, uh, this is, earlier I said I might need to use some pallet wood, although I think I have enough of the plywood. This is a piece of pallet wood. You can see it's real rough on that side, but I put it through a planer on this side, and it looks pretty nice. Now, 
Uh, last time I made something like this on my channel was the arcade controller, and uh, some of the comments were complaining that I used cheap wood. Duh, that's the point of the project. I even said that in the project. I'm using scrap wood. That's, that's how I build things. And also someone said my my workmanship was not very good or something along those lines. It's like, yeah, I, this is not what I, I do this for fun. I'm not making a professional product. A couple of brad nails, a few pieces of wood to structurally start putting it together. I'm happy so far. Uh-oh, nothing coming up on the screen. The device is on. Uh, at least I have two of these. That's why I wasn't too worried about breaking this one. And I do have a third backup plan if I can't get these to work. Dun, dun, da, dun, dun, da, dun, 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 <laughs> Okay, first off, I didn't even test this thing out before I bent the screen back. I don't even know if it worked. These things did have issues. They would overheat. I, the hard drive went bad in at least one of them. So it probably was me bending back, but I've taken it apart and the wires all seem good. The machine's definitely turning on, but getting nothing on the screen. Again, I do, oh, and I tried putting the battery back in, because I wasn't sure maybe it doesn't run without the battery, but it, that didn't help. Then I tried screwing the brackets uh, for the screen back on thing, and maybe that was a ground that the, uh, the monitor needed. Anyway, so I still have another one, which I should test it and make sure it works, which fits in there. Um, it's like I'm kind of forcing it a little bit to get the angle and the keyboard's going forward, but it will work, I'm pretty sure. Um, so my other idea, if it does not work, so these are nine inch screens. Um, I could wait till uh, Black Friday. Last year I got some really cheap tablets for my kids. Maybe that was two years ago for 30 bucks. Uh, seven inch screens, no, eight inch screens, uh, but for now, uh, this is my wife's tablet. She hasn't used it in forever. Um, it is an old Samsung. I think it's still running Android 4.0, uh, but I should be able to get some games running on it. It's a little smaller than originally intended, but if I make the frame right, I can always try to upgrade the screen later. So I might go for this now and enlarge the screen, get a different device later. Uh, but let's, let's plug in this other EPC and see if it even works. I don't know if you can tell it's pretty bright out here. This one did turn on. There's no hard drive installed on it. I plan on running everything off a SD card, um, but uh, it does turn on. So I'm going to go ahead with this one and see if I can fit in there with the game controller. And if not, I can always switch to a tablet. I can use my wife's for the time being and in the future definitely come across uh, cheap tablets again. So. so at this point, I think the next thing I need to do is uh, cut some pieces of wood to frame in the, the monitor uh, and also to keep the monitor up where it is. If it was a tablet, I'd make some sort of mount up here. But if I put a piece of wood down at the base here, the keyboard could stand on it and I think that will hold it up right where it needs to be. So piece of wood here, piece of wood here, piece of wood there, and then uh, maybe start working on the joystick or, or the top. I was doing so good that I messed up two nails right in a row. Ten and a quarter. Ten and a quarter. It is Florida. It is the summer. It is hot. I am tired. I'm going to finish this later this week. Not that you really need to know, because I'm probably edit it all together, but my shirt might change. I just wanted to let you know why. Okay, it is two days. Oh, my lens is foggy. Welcome to this humid morning here in Florida. It is a few days later. It is early enough that it's not super hot yet. Going to get a little bit done today. I had some ideas as soon as I stopped recording the other day. First off, the computer that we had in here. Started thinking, you know, my wife's tablet's a little small, the computer's hard to fit in there. What about my tablet? This thing is a, I think, 2014 Samsung. Um, and I use it primarily just to read comics before bed. That's really all I use it for. Still want to use it for that, but I figure if I have the top being able to open, I could slide this in and out, and it fits perfect. It fits perfectly right there. Uh, it's a little bit thinner than the computer, but a piece of plywood holds it in place. All I have to do is put a little bracket here, a little bracket here, a little piece of wood, something to hold it. It also works out great because it goes straight to the edges here where originally the computer I left spaces for the USB cord. Well, the USB comes out the bottom here. So once I just get a little adapter, OTG uh, adapter, I can run that directly to the um, controller. And then hopefully I'll just be able to slide it in and out. And when I want to use it, I'll slide it in there. And the rest of the time will be by my bed for me to read with. Um, so there's that. That's, that's great. It's running an older version of Android 5, but I installed RetroArch and everything seems to be working. Uh, I got Mario Brothers running on it. Next thought I had 
I'm trying to put no money into this, but I'm going to spend a dollar. <laughs> okay, maybe maybe three dollars because I might buy paint. That's another thing. I talked about doing the ink transfers, which I will have to do a video on that in the future. But I think making this black will look better than uh, than just the, the wood grain. So the ink transfer, you won't be able to see it if I paint it black. Uh, so I think I'm going to do uh, black and then uh, get some photos printed, cut them out and glue them on there or something like that for the images on the side. I think it will look a lot better. Um, maybe have, I have some uh, black light paint that I painted some things in my kid's bedroom with and I might do the trim in some sort of colored black light paint. We'll see. Uh, but also, I'm showing you this picture of me and my wife when we were younger. Um, a frame from the dollar store. So this frame is a dollar. It is the perfect width. A lot of people will put glass over the monitor, tape off the sides, and spray paint it black so it fits the screen perfectly, rather than trying to get the wood to fit it perfectly. Uh, so I might do that. It's a little long, um, but I, I figure I've never done it before. I've seen videos where you can just score glass and then break it, so I'm hoping to do that. And then something I might do with the extra piece, if the extra piece of that fits up here nicely, and I, I don't know if I'm going to do this, but I might put a label here with, a, with some sort of picture. I didn't plan on having a backlight here, which a lot of arcades do, but if I print a picture up here and put the glass over it and then run a strip of LEDs over the top, it might glow nicely. I don't know, I might do that. So those are the things that uh, I was working on or I thought of after last time. Today I'm gonna look at uh, cutting out where the joystick's gonna go, uh, doing the back panel here, which a lot of people have doors that hinge, but I don't think I'll really need that because the bottom is somewhat open and the top's gonna hinge open for the screen. So I might just do a solid piece of plywood on the back. But uh, just gonna get a little bit done today before it gets too hot. So let's get started. This is what I meant when I said earlier that I'm building this my way. I, I am far from being a perfectionist. Uh, if I was trying to be a perfectionist of this, I would get bored with it halfway through and never finish it. So I'm not even going to measure I haven't measured anything yet. I'm just going to chop off a little bit and see how it works. Before I go any further, I need to make sure this game controller works uh, on this tablet and everything. And uh, I just programmed it out, and as you can see, I'm moving, I'm jumping, everything seems to be working. Perfect. Okay, sanded, pa painted, uh, holes all lined up. Again, just eyeballed, which I was actually very lucky. I just measured out, I did this with my last joystick too. I gotta remember that these brackets for the joystick take up more space. It just barely clears my little uh, select button there. Also, I just went inside, hooked this up to my computer, and marked which side is the upside. Now, most games you can reprogram the controller, but you don't want to have to reprogram the controller every time you, you start a new game or install a new game. So um, there is a standard. This is up, down, right, and left. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put all this in. Okay, buttons all in, joystick in. Joystick did actually overlap the button here a little bit, but it didn't seem to make a difference once I tightened that down. Got wires on one of these. Got to just hook up the wires to the others and connect it to the board in the proper order again. Okay, all wired up. Uh, originally, I was thinking about putting hinges on the joystick controller so I could flip it up if I need to get to the wires. But I thought, I've seen people play on my full-size arcade before, and although these are just buttons, they're not pressure sensitive, so hitting it harder doesn't make any difference in the game. People get excited and they start whacking these things. And if I put hinges on this, the little hinges I have, I think they're just gonna tear off. So I'm gonna nail down 
uh, the controller with brad nails. And then I still have the bottom open here, I think, if I need to access wires here or here. Hopefully, I never really need to do that. Um, also, let's look at USB connector options. So these are wires that I've already had. So this is just an OTA uh, cable on the go. OTA? Yeah, on, on the OTG. OTG cable. So this will allow me to hook the controller into my tablet with micro USB here. Another option I have, uh, which is what I'm probably going to go with, is uh, yeah, the tablet has battery power, so I don't need any power cables going to this, but let's say the battery's almost dead or I'm going to run it for a while. I have this little OTG cable, which um, I can plug the controller into, and then this into the tablet, and I can plug this into a wall outlet and power everything. So there's that option. And then if I really want to, I have this fancy little thing, which is the same thing, but it has three connectors uh, for devices and one for power. So I hook this end to the tablet, this end to a power outlet, you know, phone charger of some sort. And then I can hook one controller here. And then if I wanted to hook up other controllers uh, where people can stand next to the arcade and we can play multiplayer, I could hook this into there and hook up two other controllers. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to go with this uh, one because it's not going to be hardwired into the cabinet so I can take it out whenever I want. But controller goes in there, plugs in the tablet here, and then if I want, I can plug into the wall outlet here and run it for hours. Okay, the controller's nailed on, the top is hinged, almost forgot something. Um, okay, so for graphics on the cabinet, had a few options. Uh, again, if I didn't paint it black, I could have done an ink transfer and some done, done something like that if I left it with the wood look or something lighter. Uh, another thing I was looking at, uh, you know, just getting 8x10s printed and cutting them out in certain ways. 8x10s are a little over a dollar a piece. Uh, then I looked at options like posters. I can get a 16 by 20, no 16 by 12 print for just under five dollars, um, but I would need to get two of those. That would have been ten dollars. And again, I'm trying to spill, spend as little as possible. Um, I could have gotten a bigger print and done it all on one for about eight dollars. It would have been a 16 by 20 because this is uh, 16 inches tall and about 11 inches deep. Uh, and I could have done some other graphics in between the cutouts. I decided to go with the absolute cheapest options. Uh, four by sixes I can get uh, online for about nine cents. Uh, so I ordered them for 63 cents. I got all my graphics right here, which hopefully will look halfway decent on here. So mailed to my house. They have to be losing money on shipping. I don't know how they do this, but I've got Rayu here. So I might trim around him, put him on the side. And then for the front bottom underneath the cabinet, uh, underneath the controller, I have Rayu and Ken, but I needed it wider, so I just got, you know, I cropped it, and then I'm just going to overlay them, and so that they line up properly, and it will fit perfectly down here. Same thing for the top of the arcade. I'm going to have to trim this a little bit for height, but I got this graphic offline that says arcade, so I can just go like so, and put it right there. And it will say arcade with a bunch of characters on there. I also got a little extra here that I might put on the side, which is from the X-Men game. So again, just going to line it up and glue it down on the side of the cabinet. So let's hope this turns out okay. So they're not perfect, but for 63 cents I think I turned out pretty good. This right here, I had to crop the top and bottom a little more than I had planned, so some of the characters are cut in half. Um, right you, I cut out. You can go right down here somewhere. And then uh, this one, I uh, misjudged the width of it, but it fits on there pretty good just like that. So, and then I still have the X-Men one, which I might put on the other side here. So there you go. Playing Doom with a joystick like that is not the easiest. Uh, again, this is mostly a novelty. Uh, again, 
Um, obviously, it costs money to build something like this, but my goal was to build it with stuff I already had, since I already had buttons and the joystick laying around and some wood. Uh, so, altogether, this has cost me less than $5. 63 cents for the art, uh, for the images I had uh, printed, and then I also bought a can of spray paint, which was $3 and change, which I didn't need. I did have paint, but I wanted to do spray paint just to make sure it went on evenly. And then I also bought that uh, dollar frame for glass that ended up not working out. So altogether about $5 for me. Obviously, if you were to build this, um, again, wood, wood is expensive, but if you, you can find scrap wood lying around. Um, so the main costs of this, if you wanted to build one, are the buttons, which you can buy um, a double set. So altogether, um, let's see, eight, 10, 20 buttons that light up. The controller board and two, con two uh, joysticks is usually about $40 on Amazon. Uh, and I used less than half of that. So you can look at this as a $20 cost for that. And then whatever uh, old computer hardware you have lying around, you have to build a frame around that. So it's a cheap build either way. You could definitely do it for under $50 if you put forth the effort. But I did it for $5 using what I had laying around. Um, and tools, really all you need is a saw. Uh, if you don't have a saw, I mean a cheap jigsaw uh, would not cost very much. You could probably get one at Walmart, 30 bucks maybe, 40 bucks, and it's something useful to have around, and then some sandpaper. So again, it is an old tablet, 2014 Samsung tablet, a cheaper one at the time, and uh, yeah, not all the games are going to run on that. I tried a couple of main games. Some didn't load, some loaded, some ran really slow. Uh, Nintendo runs fine on it. Game Boy Advance uh, would run a little slow, though. On a desktop computer, you definitely have the options in, in most emulators to drop the frame rate, which can get the game running a little bit smoother. I did not see an option glancing over the menus in RetroArch on my tablet, but I'm going to look into that more. And again, the tablet can always be upgraded later. Originally, I was going to use that old EPC, which is actually probably slower than a tablet. And it's a smaller screen now that I think about it. I think those are 9-inch because they're EPC 900, so they were 9-inch screens, but this is a 10-inch screen. Um, but that thing only had 512 RAM in it, where this tablet, I believe, has two. Uh, which, looking online just the other day just to see uh, on Amazon, you can get a cheap 10-inch tablet with 2 gigs of RAM for between $60 and $100 uh, on any given day. Um, are those any better than my old tablet? The RAM's about the same. I'm not sure about processing power, uh, but definitely could be upgraded later on. So I hope you enjoyed this project. I had fun making it. Uh, it's definitely going to be fun when I have guests over and my kids are looking forward to playing with it. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. Visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. There's a link in the description. And as always, I hope that you have a great day. Also visit my Patreon. Link in the description. Bye. Well, that was a fail. <laughs>